Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the little paint set that I used in my last video while I was testing out the Hanamula watercolor book. This is an 18 half pan palette, like the physical metal palette is sold as an 18 wall palette, but the collection or assortment of paints that are in here from Schmincke were, I believe, a limited edition specialty palette by Wet Paint. Um, and they came out last year during the holidays, and a couple months ago I found it on Amazon. There were a couple boxes listed from uh, some other seller, and I tried to get Tiffany to talk me out of it. She did a very, very good job, uh, and I didn't listen to her, and so I picked it up anyway. <laughs> so here we are taking a look at it. We'll take a closer look at the colors in just a little bit, but I want to tell you a little bit more about this uh, tin. It is a little bit different than some of their other assortments, and honestly, the main reason I wanted to get it was for the tin itself. It is a little bit wider than your normal 12 color or 12 half pan sets, and it's squatter, like it's shorter than this 24 half pan set that you can see on the right. So these on the right hand side are all of my existing Schmincke watercolors that I have. The top row there is all of the original 12 colors that come in the 12 half pan set. The ones on the bottom were ones that Schmincke sent me to do my review quite a while back, I think at the beginning of 2017. And the four pans at the top were from a very kind viewer who sent those to me so I could try them out in a couple of very special colors. So thank you so much to her for doing that. So the tin itself, um, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, my particular tin has a bit of a closing issue. It wobbles a bit when it closes, but I've heard from other people that that, that was not the case with theirs. They do come out with the same tin for other limited edition sets. So if you see it in the future and like the shape of it, I wouldn't let that discourage you since I had a bad experience. It doesn't mean that all of them will. But the center tray is really unique in that it doesn't have those little handle tabs that we I've seen on every other metal tin where you've got the two little pulleys that you can pull it up out of the set with. It's just a flat piece of metal and then it has three rows of the little prongs that you can go ahead and put your paints into uh, the sections for. I'm going to set that aside for just a moment as I go ahead and unwrap these paints for you. I'm just going to show you one of them, I believe. In case you haven't seen Schmincke watercolors before, I'll go ahead and put a review up in the right hand corner for you. Um, but their packaging is really great. It has all of the information that you would need to know about them. Uh, oh, yep, they also have that extra little information for U.S. remarks and specifically California because we like to put extra labels on things. <laughs> um, but anyway, it's wrapped in this little tin foil wrapper here and the most beautiful sight is a hand poured Schmincke pan in my opinion. If you're not familiar already, Schmincke pours their paints into their pans instead of using extruded paint. So this is the same formula that you would get in their tubes, which makes it great for being able to refill them. They do four layers and let each dry in between so that you get the most paint possible. So I had all of these existing colors from Schmincke and I had the new colors and I wanted to give some of the new colors a shot, but there were some really odd ones in there. So what I did is I put all of the colors onto little pieces of paper as you saw there so that I could go ahead and determine which 21 colors that I wanted to put in this set. Now I say 21 because even though this typically will hold uh, 18 pans, it's really easy to get an extra pan onto each row if you just slide them over a little bit. Here I'm showing you just the method of putting pans into these half pan sets. I still see these questions all over YouTube and so in case you haven't seen it before, the way that you use these metal tins is that you need to make sure that the tab is bent inwards a little bit so that it's nice and snug, that metal piece that is attached to that bottom piece of metal. And then you go ahead and insert the front edge of the pan into the short end, the fixed end that does not move, and then you push that into the more flexible piece of metal. Here you're seeing me kind of fidget around with a smaller pan. This is a smaller pan from Windsor and Newton. It's not the same size as the Schmincke one, so you do have to bend in that tab a little bit further than you would with some of the other ones. Once they are all in there, you can go ahead and center them however you would like. If you're only using six, there's one tab for each of your half pans. They sit at a teeny tiny little bit of an angle, but they don't slide around as long as those prongs are pressed in before you go ahead and clip in the pans. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully uh, if you need some more clarification, you can go back, rewatch that little segment, and that you can visually see what's going on there. 
So here you guys are going to be seeing me putting together a color chart that's an ID chart for the colors that are in here, especially since I am not familiar with a lot of the colors in this set. I wanted to make sure I knew what pans I was using in case I wanted to reorder those or refill those in the future, or so I can tell you guys here on the channel. Um, the reason I cut out a lot of the footage here is because I actually botched it quite a bit. That whole center row is flipped backwards. So um, I was trying something new where I was going like yellow to purple on the first line and then directly down is the blue and then over to the left you've got the greens and then down you know it, it snaked instead of using the columns but I really didn't like the way that that looked on the final color sheet because the paralene green was on the opposite side as the paralene violet and it just made sense for all my darker colors to be on one side and the lighter colors to be on the other so what I ended up doing is I went ahead and cut out each strip and cut out each little square in the strip, rewrote the names on them, did a second glaze, and then I covered them all in packing tape so that they wouldn't uh, get damaged with water. And then I used this little piece of watercolor paper with some adhesive dots and stuck each of the little uh, squares onto them. And that way, since I did take this selection of colors from a larger selection of Schmincke pans, I could rearrange them if I wanted to. The problem with this is that those adhesive dots don't fully stick and they kept popping off. So eventually I replaced the adhesive dots with, I just taped them on with packing tape and then I can remove them if I need to, but it makes it a little bit easier. Finally, whatever method you use to do your color chart, I actually taped it into that inner leaflet. I'm losing some mixing space, but I actually prefer to use the bigger uh, mixing wells on the other side, the two sections. So I don't feel like I was losing them too much and I would rather see the colors all laid out for me. And that might change as I get more comfortable with these colors and I know where everything is. I can always remove that in the future if I want to for more mixing space. So all of that footage that you guys just saw was actually recorded about a month and a half ago when I got the palette and it's just kind of been sitting around on my computer since then. I hadn't been able to edit it before then, before now anyway, and um, because I cut out so much of the footage of me making that little fidgety, all the different squares type of thing because it was so complicated. Um, I wanted to go ahead and do another swatching for you guys just so you could see the colors, you could see my color selections here, and I could talk to you a little bit about what I chose. Um, typically, I like to work from a lot of the same colors that I'm used to and familiar with, but like I mentioned, this 12 color selection that I got from the limited edition set had some really interesting colors like Saturn red and we got um, I think there was the Rutile yellow in there which you'll see on the bottom row and there were just all these really unique selections that I haven't gotten to play with as much and so I tried to complement those colors while adding in some of the colors from my other Schmincke tin that I felt were really necessary for painting so that I could have a complete set ready to go and to travel with. So with that being said, the 21 colors are going to be listed in the description for you so that you can go ahead and see those all. And there will be a still scanned frame at the end of this swatch through just because I know a lot of you guys like to ask about what colors these are. I am really excited to be able to start using this. As I mentioned, I used it in the last video when we were talking about the Hanamula watercolor book, as well as sketching that Parasaur Lophus. And I used a fair amount of colors, more than I typically would in a single painting, just so that I could play with these different types of textures and tones that I might not be used to seeing otherwise. Now it can be pretty expensive to get Schmincke watercolors here in the United States, but I know that they are popular and rather affordable in a lot of places in Europe. And if you haven't heard yet, I do have a Jackson affiliate program now. I used to only have Amazon, but for a couple months now I've had Jackson. So I'll go ahead and put a link to their Schmincke products in the description below. If you do want to pick up anything from Jackson's and uh, want to help out this channel at the same time, you'll be able to do that. As I am finishing up this recording, I hear the landscape maintenance crew coming on in with their lawn mowers. So, so that you don't have to listen to all of that, I'll try and wrap up here pretty quickly. But I want to know from you, what are some of your favorite Schmincke watercolors? Let me know in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. 
Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. It really helps out the channel a lot. And if you are new here, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you to my patrons for helping make this possible. And of course, to everyone who has donated supplies to the channel. I could not do this job without you. And I am so eternally grateful for all of your support. Thank you guys so much. Happy painting, and I'll see you next time.